And what we would like uh, for you to do, mayors, is to discuss among yourselves how you would address um, this scenario in your community. Uh, we can facilitate the dialogue, but I think it would be best if, um, if the three of you just um, open up and discuss how you would um, how you would proceed. Questions are on your screen and um, please proceed. Just uh, give us a minute to read it through again. Certainly. Okay, are there any questions about the scenario? My colleague Sammy will be documenting the discussion on a virtual whiteboard and that will assist in the report back to plenary. Um, so let me just go ahead and ask uh, Mayor Rafiq if you would um, start the discussion with your colleagues, with your peer mayors. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, so I think the, the scenario is uh, where we have some uh, uh, climate issues like flooding and uh, uh, due, due to whether we have blackouts and uh, the, yes, sir. Okay, 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 can you keep it visible, the scenario? Uh, and also the issue of, uh, I think, a lot of housing along the waterways, so which could poten potentially have been damaged during these floods. Uh, so I think uh, the first question, how will you respond to this mandate for your city? Uh, so so th th does that mean the, the initiatives for the first question, do we have to come up with the initiatives for this uh, mandate? Yes, you've been mandated, each, each uh, city has been mandated by their central government yeah. to identify and accelerate climate actions to help achieve the 20% emission reduction target by 2030. So there's a time frame, there's a target, and um, each community is asked to identify the local actions. Yeah. So, so I think uh, one the emission I would say it is regarding this CO two and the carbon emission. So, I think one would be the control on the vehicles that use fossil fuel. So, I think this one area which where we have to come up with some initiatives to either either control the number of vehicles or to have some quota on the let's say how to incentivize the green vehicles, I think. Uh, that's, I think, one area uh, which we can focus on to control the emissions. <clears throat> and also on the energy side, I think the <clears throat> focus on the renewable energy and uh, like uh, tropical countries like us uh, can focus on uh, solar, for example. And I think in some areas, maybe the wind energy <laughs> would be also an, an option. So Mayor. other mayors, if you have anything to add on this? Mayor saying? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, but this, uh, <sighs> uh, couple control, focus on the renewable energy and then uh, uh, we try to uh, public uh, use public transport. Proper use of public transport. And then uh, for the carbon emission, we try to uh, <clears throat> uh, encourage people to uh, tree planting.
uh, tree planting, tree plantation. Pollock population. Okay. Uh, I think that's all. <laughs> The word lady is a table use green vehicle, comfort vehicle, common use public transport. Okay, yeah. Hey, Mayor Asana, can you start? Abasa, Mayor Abasa. Yes, I agree with my colleagues since the uh, Shusha is a city. Uh, reserve. We are planning to do these things. Uh, no cars are allowed to enter the city, only the electric cars such as Tesla, other hybrid cars. Uh, we will not use the, there is no gas, natural gas is used in the city. So all the uh, things are working with the electric that's a very much expensive thing but uh, in the future we are planning to do the uh, renewable energy sources as that there is a river we will use that one and another solar plants we, we will put on the top of the apartments so uh, we can use that energy uh, in the city there is a there is only public transports such as golf cars and uh, electric electric buses and there is going to be big parking in the ent entry of the city everybody is uh, parking there and entering city with the public transport okay. uh, we will uh, waste management we we want to to uh, create a new uh, polygon for the waste and we will deliver the waste there and uh, get the energy from that waste and there is a new project so they presented to us yes they can generate the energy from the waste Okay, so um, I think each of you have, have identified um, the transport sector, um, waste, uh, planting trees, renewables. Um, specifically, can I ask how you're addressing the vulnerable populations that are living along the, the waterways? Uh, so I think uh, we, we, we need to have an uh, first thing is an, like an early warning to uh, one on, let's say, possible water level increase or possible storms. I think that's one thing we can do. And uh, also the emergency response, The we should have a very, I mean, uh, well-planned and uh, robust emergency response uh, team and uh, have the people aware of the process and uh, what to do in an emergency. So I think there's uh, two, two, two things which uh, I would identify and uh, other mayors. Maybe to uh, encourage people to save energy. Okay. Uh, save energy. Let me let me invite Jennifer to ask any questions of you that may um, campaign to save energy. Promise to take some actions. Energy saving. Jennifer, any questions for the mayor? Jennifer, I think you're muted. If not, let me ask Fernando. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, like I can turn on my camera. Hello, my name is Fernando, and I will, I am one of the faculty here. And um, this is a very interesting conversation, and I am seeing here the. Uh, the measures you are mentioning, like controlling the number of vehicles and incentivizing the use of green vehicles. But uh, an important issue is always how to engage with the stakeholders and how to get the population on board. So how would you be able to really get uh, 
citizens to join happily and take this because at least from where I am from, although I live in Japan now, I am from Spain, when some cities try to control the number of vehicles, that's always very contested and very difficult. So how would you be your approach to really engage with the stakeholders and do this as smooth as possible? Over. Yeah, so I think it's a very relevant question. And uh, I have highlighted previously also that uh, awareness and uh, getting public on board is a challenge for us. Mm. And a lot of people see progress as more vehicles, more convenience, more cars, which is actually a bit challenging when we are talking about uh, sustainable development and reducing CO2. So I think the idea is to start educating the public. And I think we have to focus also on the youth, the younger generation, because that's where we have hope. If you focus on the elderly, it's quite difficult to change their minds. But I think uh, public cool. awareness focusing on the impact of these, uh, if we don't do these things and how it can change our lives if we go along this path. And I think we have good examples from like some European countries like uh, I think Netherlands and Denmark, where we can show that control of vehicles and the uh, use of more bicycles and public transport has actually mm. increased the happiness or the quality of life. So I think we, we have to do a big campaign to educate the public on these examples and the, uh, the, these impacts, both negative and positive. That's what I would say, my part. Yes, thank so you very much. Bringing youth and stakeholders together, as a mayor, what would be your executive action to do that? Would it be establishing a stakeholder committee? Or would it be uh, directing your department heads to engage? What, what would be an effective mechanism that you as a mayor can, can, um, can decide or create? I think uh, one thing I would do is uh, create an, like a, a steering committee, a group which includes the public and the civil society organizations and the relevant uh, institutions like uh, could be the emergency services and response teams. So create a group which could actually work on this and help the council or the, the mayor to, to, to do the job. So I think getting people involved and let them do it as one of their own initiatives or their own actions. So I think creating a group which includes public, the CSOs and GOs, and the relevant uh, institutions from the state. Uh, that, that's one thing, one thing I would do. Okay. So one executive action is essentially creating a steering committee or a stakeholder group uh, yeah. composed of, uh, of different uh, actors. Great. Um, two more executive actions and we have about two and a half minutes left. So focus on what else um, could you do? Is there an executive order? Is there legislation you need to introduce? We can what amend the law. Your... Amend the law to control the vehicles. Okay, introduce a law. Uh, we control... limit the people to have uh, vehicles. Okay. All right. Uh, so introducing legislation to address some of the uh, local emissions from vehicles. Okay, one more. I think we've heard from two mayors. Is there a third, third mayor who has not int yet introduced an executive action? Oh, it's me. <laughs> okay, come on. You've got a minute. This is where the executive comes down. You know, it's very important. Yeah, we we already uh, had. Uh, had the legislation by the president to, to our city. So uh, they give the orders to not uh, enter to the city by the car, with the cars. We have a, a new legislation that Shusha city is a state reserve. You cannot even touch any to the walls or the buildings because all of them are historical monuments. So uh, whatever you put on, on it, like uh, advertising or something, you have to ask for permission to the mayor, mayor's office. So by this legislation is everything is in our hand. And we have a, we already uh, made a operational team uh, everybody is at, uh, attending there. There is a minister of ecology, minister of uh, 
culture ministry of the uh, yeah. okay so that's essentially a, a stakeholder, stakeholder group so you've got that um, yeah. set so you've got introducing legislation on control of vehicles uh just give us one more minute here Is on it the, taken? <laughs> can i can i suggest also that um Often um, leadership by example is important in um, getting people on board. So many of you talked about, uh, all of you talked about energy saving practices that could start with government. Um, and that would be something that would be within the purview or the jurisdiction of the mayor to mandate energy savings within government buildings, for instance. My example. Okay. All right, um, so we need one of you to ask the mayor of Shusha to report back in plenary and we'll be returning uh, from the breakout room in, in 10 minutes. In 10 minutes. I closed the room already. Oh, we're back in plenary? Nine. Need seconds. Yeah. Okay, seconds. Seconds, not minutes. Okay, so we're, we're, we're back in plenary.